Hey there, YouTube. My name is Tyler, and I am Mr. Game and Beer, and welcome to the very first time to Divinity Original Sin 2, uh, a Let's Play by me, Mr. Game and Beer, or Tyler, whichever you prefer. Uh, this is a brand new game from Valerian Studios, of course, the sequel to the original Divinity Original Sin. Um, yeah, so Divinity Original Sin 2, Divinity Secondary Sin, I don't know, call it which one. But uh, let's, let's just jump right into it. I'm going to be going into this completely blind. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of how I like it. So, yeah, let's, let's go! Single player. So, if uh, anyone's wondering why I'm not doing this multiplayer, it is because... Well, I guess, yeah. It's just so difficult to to uh, get all those boys together that, uh, that I usually play multiplayer RPGs with. Uh, I do intend to do a multiplayer Let's Play through this. I don't know if it's going to be a Let's Play or, or a stream or what, but I don't know. Look forward to that in the future. All right, let's jump in. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. I, so, I think we played tactician mode before, Jason and I, and it was just way too hard in the original game. So, I'm going to go for classic. Yeah, let's go for that. You'll need your wits about you both in and out of combat. Yeah, that sounds sounds like me, right? Oh, there we go. A little pop up there, asking for permission to do things. So this is the first time that I've even run the game, so that's why that's there. Character creation. All right, it looks like we got Tyrion here. Uh, here you can select an origin character or create a custom hero. Uh, understood. So, I've heard a little bit about the origin characters, and they are pre-made characters that you can also find throughout the game if you don't want to, uh, to customize your own character. Um, let's, I don't know, let's go ahead and listen to some of these origins. Yeah, Beast, tell us a little bit about yourself there, Beast. She's thinking about someone I used to know. My cousin. The queen, in fact. A tyrant. I tried to stop her, but things don't always go according to plan. She cast me out to a forgotten island and made short work of my allies, too. Lucky for me, I was able to commandeer a ship. I began a new life for myself out on the high seas. Aye, but I hear that the Queen is at it again. And there's something darker behind her madcap schemes this time. Mm. If I don't stop her, I don't know who will. Me. That's who. That's who, Beast. No, I d did that say that the Queen's his sister? Uh, uh, my cousin. Just... Okay. Interesting. Interesting. All right, Fane, tell us about yourself. There, bud. Oh, don't stare. How would you look after eons in some ghastly crypt? To your people are rather prone to death. Mine are not. Yet when I emerged from my completely unjustified imprisonment, I found them gone. Our culture forgotten. Any trace of the world I knew all but obliterated. <laughs> I must even hide my true face beneath an ever shifting mask for fear you savages will attack me. That is how I wander this strange world. Trying to uncover the truth about a history you primitive people never even knew existed. She was. Okay. Fane. Ethan Ben Mez Los and the Red Prince and Sabil. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's go ahead and listen to them all. I know that uh, the developers have done individual videos on all of the backstories, I believe, or all the uh, the origin stories, but let's just go ahead and listen to them cuz I haven't heard them. Once I was a crusader for the Divine Order. I pledge my life to Lucian the Divine. 
the war changed everything. He sent me to save the elves I grew up amongst. I arrived too late. Lucian ordered the use of Death Fog against the Black Ring. Annihilating everyone I once knew in the process. Now I'm a mercenary killer. One of the infamous Lone Wolves. And my next target... ...is none other than Lucian's own son. So that sounds pretty badass. These seem to add some pretty cool depth. Depth of character. Alright, tell us about yourself. Los... Losi... Losa... Losa... All my life I've been a performer, a musician, beloved and celebrated by all. But I have a secret. I'm also a playground for sprites and spirits and worse. The voice that rings inside me now is darker than any that came before. Almost caused a bunch of my fans to rip each other to pieces. <laughs> But, you can trust me. I've got this under control. Who is? Step one. Find out who, or what, is trying to take control of my mind. Step two. Make it sorry it ever tried. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about her. She seems kind of crazy. Alright, Red Prince. Tell us what you're about. Famed, of course, for my unique red skin and unparalleled skills as a general of the House of War, I, the Red Prince, was raised within the vast palaces of the fabled Forbidden City. I was destined to become the next Emperor. But my ambitions suffered a bit of a setback when I fell from grace for cavorting with demons. Now, I'm exiled and hunted by assassins. But I assure you, I remain undaunted and as determined as ever to claim my rightful throne. Hmm. Interesting. All right, Sabil. Last but not least. I used to be a slave. Kept under the thumb of the master. The bastard that made me hunt down my own kin. How did he do that, you ask? Yes. With the living scar you see on my cheek, this horror that takes no more than a song sung by Master Dearest to control my very thoughts. But now the tables have turned. I broke my shackles. And when I finally find him, I will make the master sing a very different kind of song. Hmm. Okay. Also, check out those abs. Gee whiz, she's ripped. Okay, so we're going to make our own character here. And I have put a little bit of thought into what I want to do. First of all, I think I'm going to be a male. And I think I'm going to be a skeleton. A skeleton man. That I want to be another human. That's pretty oh, that's here. That's a hilarious looking guy. Is there? Probably gonna be build a, a room or something along those lines. What is this? Chicken clock. Yeah, so I want to be some kind of rogue. Um, so the thing with undeads in this game is that uh, they don't heal by regular means. So they don't heal with healing spells or potions or anything. They heal with poison, I believe. And, and healing spells actually hurt them. Uh, they're also immune to something called death fog, which wasn't in the last game, but it's kind of like poison fog that just instantly kills people, but not undead. Uh, one other thing that they have is... Uh, they have infinite lockpicks by the way of their bony, bony finger. That's what I, uh, that's what I read anyway. 
Undead lets you heal from poison, but regular healing will damage you. I said that. And Genius gives you two bonus initiative and 5% extra crit chance. wonder how I change that. Hmm. Sander. Sander Clegane. That will not be my name. Let's go... Let's start with the old... Shadowblade template, I guess. Oh, I don't even know. Now let's start with the rogue. And then change the appearance. No bone color. Decomposed, I like that. This shard's kind of cool. Oh, yeah. Nutmeg. <laughs> Antiquated's pretty good. Snow is pretty good too. Let's do. Let's do antiquated. Face. Let's get the hair right first. Pretty cool. here. Holy crap. Lots of very ornate ones. Okay, so let's do... something like that. beards. Hmm. About being a skeleton man. I, I always find it so difficult to actually create characters in these games. Just so many options. Yeah, maybe I'll go with that. I kind of like the look of that. Let's just go with that. Okay. What was that? Monarch. I like it. Oh, almost got me that time. Try again. Ah, nice try. I'll yield to none. Try again. Meet your mate. Meet your maker. You're not trying to. You're not trying to escape. Put a creep the reaper for me. Try. You're not trying to escape. Oh, almost got me that time. Yeah, sure, let's do Trickster. That sounds good. Okay. Preset. Let's... Jeez, nice. Let's edit this. Oh, this is all different now. Increases your damage with finesse-based weapons and skills. Increases your damage with intelligence-based weapons and skills. Chance at initiative seems pretty good. Let's do that. And let's do. What do we got here? Movement speed and boost your critical modifier. Oh, I think I need Geomancer for poison. Weapons, dual wielding.
Okay, okay. Let's do Geomancer. We can go Scoundrel a little bit later on. Skills. Let's do that and that. Maybe, maybe I don't need dual wielding right off the bat. Hey guys, maybe, think maybe, we'll go scoundrel, pink flame, uh, yeah, I don't know if this is a good build or not at all, I think probably not, um, one thing that I do want to take, oh, I can only pick one, eh, crap, <laughs> I want to take pet pal, just because, you know, for the, uh, just for the viewing, the viewing value of talking to some animals. moments of your adventure. That's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna go with this tambour. Oh, that's cool. Okay, let's begin. Yeah, it's 17 minutes in there. Okay, so have points to spend. Get some. Here we go. Gain two action points immediately, but lose two action points next turn. Hmm. Destroys magic armor and then tries to set sleeping. Jump over the enemy, landing behind their back and backstabbing them for 25 to 27 physical damage. Oh, maybe I should be less finesse-based and more magic-based, but still be a sneak thief. Yeah, that sounds fine with me. Let's do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go... weapons and skills. Oh, man. Oh, this is all too much. It's all too much. Yes. Oh, I'm gonna take the finesse. Okay. Okay. Let's do. Let's do throwing knife. Yes. I like it. I like it. I'm happy. Balance tags. Everything's all set. Tambura. Let's start. You are playing as an undead poses unique risks and benefits. Undead must veil their true selves from the living or risk being attacked. Healing potions and spells will damage you while poison heals. Undead can pick locks with a bony finger alone and can survive the scourge of death fog. Yep, sounds good to me. Yes. Let's do.
It all happened like I knew it would. A single drop of sauce. Flies to honey. The monsters swarmed. The rebel panicked. The carnage began. And the magisters pointed their fingers at me. Just as I'd planned. I was shackled and collared. And sent to Fort Joy. I'd come here to kill Godwoken. But instead, I became part of their story. Divinity, original sin 2. Poor mm. Joy, that sounds like a happy place. Maybe this will be nice. Nice game. Well, look what the doc dug up. You're lucky they didn't notice just how thin you were under those bandages. Mm. Although, seeing someone wrapped up like that, they probably thought you had the scabbing plague. Hey, look, laugh, but don't touch. Better keep that hood down, mind you. The living don't take kindly to seeing their future staring back at them. Yes, sir, Mr. Skull. Do you have anything else to say? Plain dead, are you? Probably a good idea. Welcome to the Divinity Original Sin 2. Click anywhere on the ground or hold the left mouse button continuously to begin exploring. Okay. Maybe, oh, maybe I need to do this. Okay. Let's start looting. Small town. I go ahead and give that a read. This is your inventory, blah, blah, blah. Find out what you've done. Yep, yeah, cool. Press and hold. Yes. Yes. You have too long presumed Source was a virtuous part of the civil society, yet we need look no further into the past than the Source King's reign to understand the havoc such magics may wreak. One day, another order must follow in the Source Hunter's footsteps. Sorcerers can, must, be muted. Uh, the new model of source collars provided by Bredeman is proving most effective. So I believe this is... This game takes place... I want to say like 400 Your years patience. after the original. That may or may not be true. I might have just lied to you. So take that with a grain of salt. Let's check out this medicinal cabinet. Medical cabinet. I don't even remember them strapping me down. Yeah, me neither. Ah, you're up. Yes. Looks like that collar fits you snugly enough. Nice bit of work, even if I do say so myself. Open your mouth when you talk to me. Put out the light. And then, put out the light. There. Not too tight, I hope. The collar, I mean. Oh, not to worry. Every dog has to get used to its leash. Not a dog. In the meantime, your Skeleman. next stop will be Magister William. All passengers have to be registered in the ship's manifest, and he's the chap in charge of the logs. I think I'm going to turn the volume up just a tiny bit. Let's put her up to 61. And we're yes. You'll find him on the other side of this deck, in the officer's quarters. She colored you. Yeah, last thing I remember is hoisting my 15th pint. Is this the ram's head, Lou? Don't you dare. If you violate the virtue of my carpet, I'll do a good thing worse than put a collar around your neck. Index okay. fingers pressed to her lips. She pauses a moment to give you a scrutinizing gander. Oh, I like that. My word, you do seem a bit befuddled, don't you? Perhaps I was a bit too generous with that sedative. Oh well, I'm sure you'll soon gather your wits. Most likely. Eventually. 
In the meantime, all you need to know is that we're en route to Fort Joy. Yay. A new life awaits. And if you're a particularly good boy, perhaps a cure as well. An end to source. For good. Now, why have you colored me, by the way? Why, for my peace of mind, of course. Why don't you try casting one of those source spells of yours? See what happens. <clears throat> um, she might be playing a trick. No, you recall great powers building inside you, the ones you commanded before your capture. Unleash them. Currents of magic surge inside you, boiling, bursting, then breaking, only to fade back into your soul like rain into the earth. Hmm. You better stop before you hurt yourself. All will, but no result. There you have it, see? The collar's function. It neuters you, of sorts. Makes you unable to cast source. Rude. For your own peace of mind, of course. Yours and the whole world's. All right. Okay. Okie doke. You've been collared and you've been told... Fine. Good gods. This has been a murder here. Behind the Magister, a blooded mass lies in a heap. Gore and limbs lie at odd angles. You can't make out a face amid the mess. Uh, what happened? There's been a murder. A sorcerer was killed by one of your own. Lucky you were busy getting your collar fitted at the time, or you'd be a suspect like the rest of them. Waters is investigating. She'll figure out who did it. Always does. Probably that crazy lady, am I right? Uh, need a hand in the investigation? Aren't you enterprising? I'll let Waters tell you now herself. Go ahead. She with the body. Oh. Oh. <laughs> she already doesn't like Harry Ugly Bonson. sight, isn't it? Burns me up this happened under our protection. We're extremely lucky no void walk and followed the source that did this. Hmm, yes. Inform her that she wasn't this man's protector, she was his captor. Finn didn't see it like that. He was desperate for us to help him. Two things scared the living daylights out of him. His own shadow and his own source. We'll find out who did this. Speaking of... She looks up at you with a mirthless smile. Mirthless. I was on duty in your room when the murder happened. You were asleep the whole time. Didn't even stir. You're one of the only indisputably innocent people on the ship. Unless you can commit murder in your sleep, of course. Maybe I can. Not with that collar on you, aunt. Listen, I could use someone to keep their ears open among the passengers. Sometimes they clam up in front of a uniform. Bring me a good lead, and I'll throw in a shiny gold coin for you. <clears throat> How about that? I'll let you know if I hear anything interesting. Thanks. I just want to catch whoever did this before they hurt anyone else. Okie doke. Uh, let's, uh, let's have a sit. Let's get comfortable. Think about who could possibly kill this person. Oh, poetry book. No lesions. No trauma. Understood. He was bled by magic. A woman from Driftwood with nary a care offered me kisses that answered my prayer. I accepted her gift and then to my dismay, a spider she was, and I her buffet. Once feasting was over, she licked no red lips. I rose from the floor, still coming to grips. She thanked me for coming and bade her farewell. My prayer indeed answered, though still I did swell. So, okay. Interesting. That, uh, is that it? Just the one page there? Yes, this is a rare kind of magic. Okay, I'll need to write to headquarters right away. Yes, rare. This magic is super rare. This is the most unique magic I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, wood chips. Give me those. And a needle to inject them with. Three gold coins. Who just leaves this stuff lying around for a prisoner like me to pick up? Rest and heal your party. That's pretty good. Let's check this back. 
one. Oh, a sheep. Talk to me, sheep. <laughs> I'm not suited for this. It's sea cow, not sea sheep. I admire your wool. Might I take a bit? Haven't got any shears, have you? People these days. Okay. Find shears. My my next uh, objective. Minus one initiative. I think I'll pass. Come on, please, no, sir. Come on, please. I forgot how to sing. No, sir. I did. Help me, no, sir. Sing for me. Ah, oh, there you are, <clears throat> husband. Oh. Would you please tell this very charming gaggle of not at all brat like babes that I am by no accounts this loser woman, nor do I sing, in fact. I'm deathly, deathly allergical. Yeah, play along and take her arm with a grin. Uh, you children must be mistaken. How very correct you are, spouse of mine. Madam Josephine Gribbles de Peeve refuses to be confused with anyone else. What? What's so funny? Her pinched face cracks into a great grin, and she shoos the children away from her with a laugh. <laughs> yeah, okay, you found me out. Go on and git, and maybe I'll sing you something when I'm good and ready. She turns to you, dark-eyed and dirty-haired, and smiles flatly. Gotta keep ourselves entertained, haven't we? Of course. Uh, Losa, I presume? You presume right. Do you know anything about the murder that happened on board? Nope. Trying not to find anything out, either. Ignorance is bliss. The utterer, the better. Maybe, uh, you should have a look around with me and we can watch each other's backs. Thanks, but I already belong to an elite and exclusive ship gang. We play ball every day after lunch. You're too soft for hey, it. You don't have to make fun of me, you jerk. You take care, though. Suddenly, her eyes cloud to an unnatural black. Grayish veins run down her face and her mouth tightens into a cruel sneer. As quickly as they came, the clouds clear. She smiles as though no change came over her. Good luck, Chief. A weirdy. You put a knuckle in it. I'm trying to concentrate. Okay. Got a big old rope. Oh, this is too heavy for me. I wish I was a strong man, not just a, a bone man. Oh, a teddy bear. Excellent. This is just a deal. I know your origin, Sabine. Mad? Do you know Losa? She's a really good singer. I'm better, though. Listen. La, 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 la. No, that's no good. Tell you if you can keep it quiet long that's no good. Listen. No good at all. You want 18 gold for this crab claw? You're crazy. Get, get away from me. Polly? I'm here because I'm magic. Are you here because you're weird? These people. These people are horrible. Twice. You look like my daddy. His name is Frida. He's waiting for me at home. Is your daddy a, a bonesman as well? Uh, why do you have beer, little girl? Stained pants. It was one of them. I know it. Yeah, give me, give me some money for these, I'm trying these to things. Charles and Chuck. About us. Like cattle to them. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. Um, how about a bucket? How much money do you for that? One gold. One by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? Broken needle. You think me mad? Okay, give me, give me your five gold there, little girl. Insufferable, surely. What are you trying to hear anyway? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Ugh. What's in a name anyway? I don't like comedy. Okay. My name is Harry Bonesman. Well, you aren't here on my list. Scram, eh? We're trying to catch a killer here. You can be always the closest to Okie doke. Fain. The elf is reading a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia. He looks up, his big round eyes scanning your body, absorbing every detail. He reaches out and examines your bandages, rubbing them between his fingers. Fascinating. Mm. 
He sits back and returns to his book, flicking quickly from page to page, completely oblivious to your presence. Three children ruffle his hair with a grin. Hmm? What purpose did that serve? Was that a greeting? Was it... Oh! Oh dear! I seem to have crossed some cultural taboo. How... difficult. You have my sincere apologies. Perhaps I should demand the same from those red-cloaked humans. They laid their hands on me more than once. How about that book? I do not believe I have been drawn anywhere. It is a quaint little read, but it has its faults. It is simultaneously too detailed and insufficient. I know the beginning of this tale and the end, but I am rather missing the middle. Hmm. Tell me, what do you know of your... our world's history? Some personal experience of history you've seen a lot in the last couple of centuries. Oh, please. I have no interest in that. Your books are too full of it already. Okay. No. I want to know about the Celestial. I want to know about your... This text tells me that they created all creatures, but nothing of what came before. Hmm. Where did these gods come from? Who are their people? Where are the others of their kind? Uh, why are you so curious about the gods? The elf's face freezes for just a second before he waves his hand dismissively. Oh, it's just one of my idle curiosities. We mortals do like to consider these things, do we not? <laughs> now please, run along. I have a world to decipher. Oh, why are you so curious about the gods? No amount of pestering will get the elf to take his eyes off his book or respond to your questions. Okie doke. Do you classify this slop as food? I've seen more. Well, well. What have we here? A fresh face in this stale hell. Let's size you up, shall we? See if you'll do. Yeah. The lizard looks you up and down, like a farmer would a fetching horse. You're fetching? All of a sudden, he grips you firmly by the chin, with the intent of inspecting your teeth. Yeah, it's humor. Hmm. There's some discoloration, as well as a rather disconcerting lack of tongue and gums, but I've seen worse. After all, one can't expect to find prime merchandise on a squalid little ship like this. Now then, to business. You will answer me three questions. The first one is this. Can you cook? I can, but my sense of taste isn't what it used to be. And of course, a cook who can't taste is about as useful as a dog in a chess game. On to the second question. Can you knit, weave, in short, uh, tailor? Um, most certainly. Given a sheet of satin, I can make a bum look like a baron. Oh, but to feel the caress of satin on my scarlet skin once more. A most satisfactory answer indeed. On then to my final query. Have you the ability to administer the upkeep of one's personal appearance? The delicate art of cosmetics is what I'm after. I most certainly have personal pride. I'm no stranger to combs, powders, and perfumes. If you can't tell. The very basics, then. I suppose that's a start. So, three questions asked, three questions answered. Let's evaluate, shall we? As per your own testimony, you can tailor and groom, but you have the taste buds of a dung beetle. Still, beggars can't be choosers. So without further ado, I offer you my sincerest congratulations. As of now, you are my slave. I accept. Of course you accept. Mine wasn't an offer, it was an order. Anyway, you may leave me for a moment. We'll go over your duties once we reach Fort Joy. Now shoot! Lovely, I've made a friend. I'm trying to concentrate. They don't care about us. We're like cattle. You one of them? A divine order loyal. They killed a sorcery, you know. They'll hide the evidence well enough, but make no mistake. Hmm, so it probably wasn't this guy. 
Probably not. Beast. A broad dwarf sits totally upright on the bench, eyes closed, palms face up on his knees. His beard is a cascade of meticulous plaits, each one braided through with golden medallions. He raises an eyebrow as you approach, but doesn't open his eyes. Listen up, boy. You hear that? Hmm. Um, what are we hearing? The ship, of course. Listen to the ship. A wave of sound washes over you. The unintelligible chatter of your shipmates, the groaning of wood from floor to ceiling, the boom, crash, and crackle of waves around you, complaints from the sea itself. And? It's moaning like a sick man. Sick as a leper's cat. From the state of it, I'd say she's being cared for by a bunch of beardless babes who never loved anyone but their own mum. True that. But there's more. Listen close. I listen again. There now, just like that. Aha! His eyes snap open as his countenance breaks into an expression of joy. One great paw claps you on the back, the other catches you before you lose your footing. There. You heard that, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. Aye, this is good news, boy. Good news. Mm, a rat? No, you beautiful idiot. That wasn't any rat. It was the wheel. Squeaks whenever the helmsman jerks it clockwise, which means we're heading east. Burn my beard. That means if we've been traveling for... Yes. Only 10.34 nautical miles to Fort Joy. Nerd. Jeez. Um. Okay. Why are you so excited about reaching Fort Joy? I haven't had heard anything good about the place. <sighs> no, indeed, boy. But that ain't my final destination. Ooh. The dwarf leans back from the table and strokes his beard, gold medallions jingling merrily. His eyes roll over to you. That'll be all. Thank you kindly, boy. If you're hatching an escape plan, I want in. Mm, no, I was not. Dog, talk to me. You! Sorcerer! Blood? No! Go! Oof. Okay. I spent my life singing for my slaves to bring me my supper. Finer fare than boiled roots and rotten tubers, too. Meanwhile, the Magisters feast on honeyed meat behind this very wall. <gasps> the indignity. Mm, the indignity. Goodness. I'll give you that knuckle if you keep carrying on. One of us will kill our own. They're picking us off one by one. Can we just skip to the part where I reassure you and you shut up? You think me mad? Mad? Insufferable, surely. Not to back here. What are you trying to hear anyway? Why did it want me to move that garbage? I'll tell you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Oh. I never thought you'd end up a prison guard, Vic. That right. I always knew you'd turn out rotten, Ben Nest. Your kind always hung closest to our divine, like wolves around a campfire. A greasy key. Well, you've got this wolf on a leash now. As soon as the Inquisitor gets here, we'll hang you right over the side of this ship with it. I'm busy watching for clues, sorcerer. Go take your sob story somewhere else. Okay. I was just trying to make friends, but whatever. Fuck me, right? Talk to me if and A then. scruffy man lounges against the wall with scarred arms folded. A sly smile playing on his face, he stares across at the Magister guarding him. Noticing you, he straightens and beckons for you to come closer. Watch your back, new fish. There's a murderer on board, and I'd bet three months' pay it's this tramp you found. Rolling his eyes at the Magister's warning, the man named Ifan beckons again. Okay. He leans in and adjusts your collar with a sharp tug, balancing its weight so it no longer presses unpleasantly on your neck. He winks. Pinches less that way, right? Hocking a phlegmy gobbit in your general direction, the sullen magister settles back to his task of glowering at Ifan. And now, you. 
Uh, why does the Magister suspect you of murder? We used to know each other, more's the pity. I was his commander many, many, many moons ago. Isn't that right, Vic? Standing far back from Ifan, the tight-faced Magister draws one finger across his throat in an elaborate fashion, but says nothing. Ifan grins, flashing pointed white teeth. Mm. Same as he was at 14 years old. Only difference is somebody gave him a bigger sword and now he's Johnny Big Pants. What did you do to find yourself at the mercy of a subordinate? Long story. Maybe I'll tell you about it in the joy. Away from interested parties. Ifan performs an elaborate pantomime of keeping quiet, one finger in front of his lips as he leans back against the wall. Greasy door. Greasy key for greasy door. Oh, look at all this. All this food. Oh, mashed potatoes, poison. Non-mashed potatoes. Let's check out this here journal. I've seen more appetizing things coming out of plague-stricken pigs. There's, there's nothing this else stone can contains no text, to instead sketches of dragons fill every page. The artist is hardly talented, but clearly enthusiastic. I've never dined on anything less than a dozen course dinner, and I don't intend to do away with the custom. I kind of hate well, the red uh, prince out there. It sounds a like a bit of a prostitution. Ooh, a pepper. Maybe don't rub your eyes after picking this one up. It won't be the end of the world, but it'll sure feel like it is. Don't you get saucy with me when you clearly don't know the first thing about sauce. Ooh, restoration scroll. Understood. Chips. A washing tub. Why not? Recipes. Open a locked door or chest, you can find the key and learn lock picking or use brute force. Let's try and lock pick it. Shall we? Thievery level too low, well, that's sad. Okay. I'll tell okay. you if you can keep it quiet long enough for me to listen. Who have I not talked to? How dare you classify this slop as food? Sabeel. An elf sits tucked away in a dark spot, lazily rolling dice onto the surface of a barrel. They sound like the dry cackling of an old witch. And a nice dark spot right underneath that lantern. Snake eyes. She chuckles. I bet that's just what they'll look like. What are you doing? Rolling dice. Cool. Deciding fates. Can you read the future in cow entrails as well? She eyes you quite seriously. <laughs> Not the future, no. But I can read the past in flesh. One of the perks of being an elf, you see. I'm quite good at it, too. Hmm. I could lick your arm and tell you how you spent the night before last. Shall I? I don't see why not. She looks at you in surprise when you bear an arm of bone. Oops. My. Guess I'll have to find out the memory from Marrow. Won't I? She gives your arm a vigorous stroke of the tongue, efficient like a cat grooming. Hmm. hmm. You were in a cellar with other sorcerers, watching, staring at them, hoping that none would stare back. You were thinking of flesh, or to be rather more precise, the pleasures of the flesh, those that have eluded you for so long. Uh, you're so right. Of course it is. The truth's right there, skin deep, so to speak. But don't you worry, darling. Your secret's safe with me. I don't lick and tell. Hmm. Uh, whose fate are you deciding? Don't worry, honey. It isn't yours. She looks you up and down with the merest hint of a coy smile on her lips. Never say never, though. Okay. Alrighty then. Is there nothing in this room? Is this just an empty room? Yeah. Just one single barrel. I haven't found any sheeps for you yet. They're not sheeps, shears. Dang it. The hat 
hatch is blocked. I need to find the hatch is blocked. I need to find another way. So, uh, okay. Sorry, sorry. My apologies. Well, how the crap do I get out of here then? They don't care about us. We're like cattle to them. Room door. Here to register, sir. Good, good. Magister Williams is just about done with the last passenger. Okay, so far. Yeah, I've been through worse. Trust me, with Bishop Alexander in charge, things will get a lot better from here on out. He's God walking, you know. Oh. You head on in now. Williams will get you short at fast. Knock it up. Keep those bumps trying to run. And if she tries to run, shoot to kill. Never thought you'd have seen my man Jefferson. What on earth is the matter? Right. Most I strongly suspect you mm. know all about it. All the to our Do you? Well, perhaps you're absolutely right. Well, you've got this wolf. Boring. Few of them are in good spirits, especially the children. The others are sullen. Don't blame them. Change is rough. They'll make new friends sooner or later, and when we cure them for good, they'll be thanking us, not cursing. Well, most of them. That elf with the dice, that lone wolf, the creaky voiced woman in the kitchen, some folks won't get right. I uh, reckon they won't be the first to get cured if they're ever cured at all. I'll give you that number if you carry it on. What oh, dang. I'm gonna pawn some of this junk. I wonder if that's a new. Get rid of this washing tub. Oh, backpack. Uh, go ahead and take some of this food while we're here. May as well, right? What oh, chub fish? You'd end up a prison guard, Dick. Some wine. Red snapper. Your chest was confiscated goods. Standing at the center of the room, you spot a sorcerer haughtily eyeing a pair of nervous looking magisters. They keep their crossbow trained upon her as she's being interrogated by an officer. So you admit it then? You murdered that poor fella? Yeah, I solved the crime. Yes, I did. But of course, that was only the beginning. She turns her head and looks you straight in the eye. No. There are others whose lives must end. Good God, the woman's mad. You there, sorcerer. Go and fetch Magister Siwan. We need to do more than collar this maniac. We need to shackle her hands and feet. What do you mean by there are others whose lives must end? It means your journey draws to a close. Do stick around for its finale, though, because... She reaches for her collar and simply removes it. What? I'm just about to create a scene. Subdue her, man, quickly! If she casts source, the Void Woken will come. They'll end us all. She smiles with wicked satisfaction. Precisely. No. I'll take her out. No big deal. Oh. oh! Holy carp. What? What happened? Okie doke. Let's go ahead and loot some confiscated goods here. Get some shivs and such. Okay. One. That's still locked. He's 
guy has a goo. Oh, 16 gold, though. Oh, heck yeah. Okay. Oh, what? What happened? Huh, must have been the turnips. Uh, water in his face. Water? Wine, for goodness sake. Oh. The lizard's eyes close as he slips into unconsciousness. You shake the lizard by the shoulders, but you're unable to wake him up. The dwarf lies in a heap on the floor, his great beard twisted and tangled around him. He is stock still. You can't see if he's living or dead. <clears throat> Listen for our you hear a faint thud, thud, thud. He's alive, but only just. The dwarf lies in a heap on the floor. He's... Okay. Should I grab all that beer? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Oh, I wish looting was a little quicker. Oh, okay, it is. If you're not using that. The thing. Oh, Majesty Jalen, no. Where did this garlic come from? I didn't see this before. All right, talk to me if I if I'm lies motionless, curled on the ground like an animal. Under his shaggy hair, you can see green eyes fluttering as if in a nightmare. A low whine escapes his lips. His eyes flicker open, but he doesn't register your presence at all. Lucy? Lucy? Ifan cries out, then his eyes fall closed again. No matter how much you shake him now, he cannot be roused. Oh god, Victor. Muddy mittens. You'll live on through me, through your mittens. Not the final dark. Not yet. I'll get you out of here. It's no use. Your words do not seem to reach her. The dice roll darkly. They're rolling for me. She was dramatic. Gold. A chunk of flesh. Take this ancient book now. What is this? The soul skin consists uh, on no magic stufel, even those that were blocked or even removed, so as an individual. I delight in his madness. It is an invitation to manipulate all which we want to believe immutable. He provides all manner of experimental subjects. The tech beneath lists a series of hexes and materials required for muting the source. Some of those objects are circled in black ink and I annotated it as follows. Okay. The Magister lies on the floor, unconscious and bleeding from a dire looking wound. No. The Magister lies on the floor, trade? unconscious and bleeding from a dire looking wound. Okay, that's kind of weird. Okay, doke. Good luck. Outspeed. Did I not talk to this one? The young woman lies in a heap on the floor. She's breathing normally, but her eyes are wide open, like those of a corpse. Dark, grayish black clouds swirl through them. Mad. Shake her. <clears throat> Okie doke. Well, let's go upstairs then. The hatch is blocked! The hatch is blocked! The hatch is blocked! I need okay. to find another way! So there's stairs back there. It's not so It feigns nowhere around. Okay, good. Oh, he's my way upstairs. He seems like a cool cat. Oh, there's a doggo. Do you think that doggo's gonna attack me? 
Guns, damn it! We need to get off this wreck, and quick! Alright, Doggo. Talk to me. The hound pulls desperately at its snout. It winces as it draws blood from its wet black nose and continues scratching. Uh, what's the matter, dog? The dog notices you for the first time and snarls. The hairs on its back prickling as it lowers itself into a lunge. <laughs> it sneezes suddenly and paws at its nose once more. Can't smell. Can't breathe. Too much sauce. Too much. Too much. Please, we can stop. I didn't do this, I'd stop it if I could. The dog whines and continues pawing at its nose. Oh, maybe I should. Not long before this thing snaps to the really, yeah, no, that's not possible. Oh dear. Damn, that doesn't bode well. Onwards and upwards. Journal. The smeared ink makes the journal difficult to read, but you managed to make out much of the late century. Wouldn't be happy with the situation, but what Dallas don't know won't hurt him. Gods know I'm not paid enough to haul these source freakers to their Isle of Untouchables. From there, it's off to Driftwood with those barrels. That dwarf tossed me a handsome sum of gold for shipping them. See. Let's read this letter. My sweet Stefan, as I write this letter, we near the Isle, but the time the owl delivers it, I will be but a day away. I have heeded Alexander's orders just as you said I should, but I think of Lucian often. If the divine had condoned us, would he have blessed us as we ripped children from their mothers? Can this be the only way? I feel cold, inside and out, of one thing I am certain. Your arms will warm me when I find you again. With love, Reeks. That water. Take that. Hey, uh, Mr. Rex. Oh, I am encumbered. Okay, you know what? I probably don't need this water barrel. There we go. Oh, it's the bust of Alexander, of course. Posing an imperious the sculpted form of Bishop Alexander, the divine order seems to have been carved in a hurry by trembling hands. Why don't you go on top of that? Thank the gods! By the divine grace, what was- He eyes the collar circling your neck and reaches a hand towards his blade. Another sorcerer! The Magister's companion doesn't blink, frozen in place at the sight of you. Hmm. Uh, uh, you better not mess with me. He leaps to attention, then whispers loudly to the other Magister. Don't just cower there, Rix. Take out your blade. Rix raises his sword, which shakes to the rhythm of his trembling hand. Oh, no. I didn't want this. Okay. Oh, I don't want to kill you. Combat backstab. Move into the cone behind an enemy and attack while wielding a dagger to perform a backstab. Understood. Okay. Let's do... Some freaking... These guys have... Oh, am I gonna get... You know what? I don't need the backstab. Poison dart. Oh, 
I'm sorry, Rex. I didn't want it to be that way. Just uh, put his all his armor right back up. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Okay. I guess I will end my turn. This, is, this doesn't even get through his armor, though. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Flat. Let's take some bound tomes. We can read those later. Why not? Why not? A shabby letter. Painting. Oh, the rift is destroyed. Sorry. So puzzled. Throw a dagger at this water barrel. Put out the fire. Look at that. Bob's drunk. Just off. Death bog barrels have been locked down in storage. Stay out. Human wrecked boat. Anyone starts fooling around down there, and lights out. You pass through the door and are suddenly face to face with an undead. His skull is bizarrely angular and a glorious jewel sits in the middle of his forehead. The skeleton is quickly leafing through a volume of Cranley Hubert's famous encyclopedia, muttering to himself. No, no, no! What damn fools record knowledge on a pulped tree? It catches fire, it turns into must when wet, it cannot even resist acid! 
No wonder they're so bloody ignorant. The skeleton looks up and notices you for the first time. Oh, it's you. Shouldn't you be running and screaming or some such? Uh, shouldn't you be doing the same? The ship is going down. The skeleton groans and looks back to his book, frantically flipping from page to page. I know that you were mortal once, but could you not have let their ignorance fall away with your flesh? I have neither lungs to drown nor stomach to poison. This ship's fate does not concern me. No, nope. damp robes are the most I have to fear. Once this glorified skiff hits the sea floor, I will simply walk to shore. You, on the other hand, would be better placed finding a lifeboat. I dare say you would be hopelessly lost in the ocean's dark half. Hmm. Well, at least I'm doing something. Could be saving lives instead of just reading. The skeleton holds up his book in one quick, frustrated movement. I am trying to discover if there is anyone worth saving. And I will be damned if I let the lives of some mayflies get in my way. Go on, go. Swim or drown or do whatever takes your fancy. I have a book to read. Milk. Well, this is just a little bit of a douche. The marking on the door was painted recently, judging from its pungent scent. You don't recognize the symbol, but it's clearly warning you away. You press your palm against the door to open it. Your fingers clack against the wood, and you suddenly feel gray. The touch leaves you numb, dull. Pull the door open. It doesn't budge. I'll use my key. The door groans open, but an ashen shadow clouds your mind. Ah, death bug. Death fog? Good thing I'm immune. Still, this means trouble. I suppose. Um, I'm going to end this episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I will continue the series in the next episode as we see what's up on the deck. I imagine this is the deck. I don't know. What's upstairs? Who knows? Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.